Good morning. Would you give a, your neighbor a high five? As you can see, I'm in Thailand today, and the reason why I'm here is St. Paul Christian School has joined 12 other international schools from Asia Pacific in coming together to form a conference of Christian schools. We call it ACSC, Association of Christian School Conference. What it is, is it brings top 12 schools from our region together to compete in athletics, as well as fine arts, band, music, and academics, while learning from each other. It will allow our students to do mission work in places like Thailand and in Malaysia, Singapore, the Philippines, Korea, and Japan. And so it's a great milestone for us. And over the next three days, the administrators from all these schools, including myself, will be coming together and putting the groundwork which we believe in years to come will make our school even better. And so continue to pray for us, the school, and, and, and myself as we move forward in this great milestone. I also want to thank those of you who were at the Hallelujah Carnival. It was such a great success. Everyone's been talking about how well it was run, and we had more kids this year than any other years in the past. And, and so it's a really a great uh, I just want to be thankful to you for all your hard work and everything you have done. I want to thank Hope and Pat. I want to thank my mom as well and, and Jeff Sanchez, the Rosarios, and Carousel Leaders, and many of you who put in. And if, if I didn't mention your name, I, I apologize. But I just want to just express my gratitude. And it makes me proud to be a part of this church and be a co-worker as we continue to reach out into the community. So I want to express my gratitude and thanks for you. You know, even though it rained, I was sitting back and I was watching the fireworks go up and Jeff did such a great job. And I was looking at the rain coming down and I was thinking about our church and what we've accomplished that night. You see, rain, one, two, three, 20, 30 drops, doesn't really do much damage. But when rain comes in a bunch and there's a lot of raindrops coming in, it can paralyze cities. It can flood towns, it can destroy homes. It has such a impact on its environment. And just like that, one, two, three, ten of us, maybe we can do some work and impact our environment, but when, when all of us come together and join together like what we did, we can have a great impact in our community. And I just want to thank you for that as well. Speaking about thanks, I want you to turn with me to 1 Thessalonians 5.18, and it says, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. I remember a story about these two men who had wandered into a path, into this field, and, and all of a sudden they came across a bull who had kind of seen them and was riled up. And as the bull started to chase them and they're running down, one of the other guys turns around and he says, Hey, John, why don't you say a prayer? You know, ask God to help us. And John looks at this man, he's like, you know, I don't, I don't know any prayers. I haven't been to church. I don't know any public prayers. The only prayer that I remember is what my dad prayed three times a day. And so the guy looks at John, he says, well, just pray, will you? And he looks at John and he says, oh, Lord, for what we are about to receive, make us truly thankful. This morning, I want to talk about being thankful. You see, God says in all circumstances, we should be thankful. And why is it God's will for us to be thankful? I think the number one reason that we should be thankful is it stops the spirit of covetousness into our lives. Now, covetousness is a spirit that can damage us and it has a far-reaching effect to you and your family and the people around you. Basically, what it is, is we look at other people, other people's spouse. Oh, I wish my spouse was like him. Or, wow, he's much better than my spouse. Or, my kids, I wish my kids were like their kids. Or, I wish I had a job like his job or drove his car. And we start looking around with the things that we don't have, but we're not grateful what we do have. And that's the thing about being thankful. It takes our eyes off what other people has and it focuses on what God has given to us. When we have the spirit of covetousness, sometimes we look at all the things that are wrong with our own family, with our own spouse, with our own job, our own life, that we fail to notice that God has given us this great gift and blessing to our lives. And when we are truly grateful and thankful, then we stop this spirit of covetousness. We look at ourselves and we realize and we see our own lives from a different perspective. We become grateful for what God has given us. But not only that, when we realize how grateful and how much blessing we have in our lives, then we also are acknowledging God's power 
into our lives that if he has done great things for us now, he can do even greater things for us. And that's why I believe we should always be thankful. You see, thankfulness is so much more than just comparison from our own situation to other. Thankfulness is more than having food or a nice house or, or clothes to wear because all those things can be taken away from us. Thankfulness is rather a state of being, a way of life. We usually fail to live in a state of thankfulness because we take it for granted. The author Emerson said that if the stars came out once a year, we would all stay up to behold its glory. Why is that? Because the stars come out every night, we take it for granted. We don't even stare in awe of its presence. And that's how it is sometimes. And God has blessed us so much and we've got accustomed to his blessing that even the littlest things we forget to be thankful. Basically, we've, we've become a little bit spoiled. I remember growing up when Typhoon Pamela, and I mean, you guys who were still were born during that time, and I was very young, and I remember when Typhoon Pamela finally passed, the, the island was devastated. We didn't have power water for weeks on end. And one of the things that we had taken for granted was just frozen water or ice cubes. People could not, for weeks, we didn't have anything cold to drink. We were at drank tap water, you know, these were born before the days we had bottled water, we drank, everything was warm or hot. And I remember the day when we were driving through, we saw a big sign, one of the stores, one of the gas stations that says, we have ice. And people were lining up, trying to get ice cubes. Why? Because they had taken it for granted. All of a sudden they realized how much they missed something cold to drink. Psalms 103 verse two, David says the same thing. He says, praise the Lord, all my soul, and forget not all his benefits. You see, if we forget God's benefits, we forget his blessings, and we end up being ungrateful and taking what we have for granted. In 1988, there was a Polish railway worker by the name of Jan Zerb Zerbeski, and I hope I said his name right. But basically, in 1988, he got hit by a train. He barely lived. He, he fell into a coma. And he stayed in coma for 19 years. In 2007, he awoken to a new, whole new world. Poland, at the time he was hit by train, was in a communist state. There was hardly any meat as meat was being rationed. There was long lines for things. People didn't have much. When he woke up 19 years later, in 2007, Poland had become a democratic state. People had cell phones, people had things, people were in great wealth. Imagine he went to sleep with a country that's barely getting by when he woke up 19 years later. People had so much wealth. But this is what Jan had said. It says, what amazed me is all these people walking around with their mobile phones, with their nice cars, with their nice clothes. They kept complaining how much more they needed to get. They had taken for granted. He had fallen asleep in a, in, in a country that had no freedom, had no food, had no wealth. When he woke up 19 years later, they had so much of everything, yet people kept complaining that they did not have enough. When we take God's blessings for granted, we are saying, Lord, I don't have enough. And that's what thankfulness does. It helps us remember all the great things that God has done for us. So what has God done for you? The Bible says that we need to give thanks in all circumstances, whether it's good or bad. I, came across a story about a Scottish preacher by the name of Alexander White. Alexander White was a man known to always find something to be thankful about. One Sunday morning, the weather was gloomy, it was raining, much like what we've been having for the last few weeks. And people were trying to see if he would find something great about it. And so they said to him, they said, Preacher, uh, how, what can you be thankful God with, with a terrible day like this? And much to their surprise, Pastor White said, we thank you, O oh Lord, that weather is not always like this. You can always find something to be thankful about. My question to you this morning is, what are you thankful about? You take just a few moments to think about what are the things that you're thankful about? Have you thought about the great things that God has done for you? Well, what are some of the things that you've been thinking about today? If you're like me, I, you'll probably be thankful for your family, for your home for the car you drive. You're probably thankful for maybe the job that you have. You're thankful for the church that you go to. But as I look through Psalms 103, I notice 
David wasn't thanking God for those kind of things. You see, everything that you probably thought of and that I would be thankful for are tangible things. Things like your house or your family, things that you can touch. But if you read Psalms 103, David, not once in the entire Psalms does he thank him for his family or his home or his possession, his job. What does he thank God for? He says, I thank God because he forgives all my sins. He heals all my diseases. He redeems my life from the pit. I thank God because he has crowned me with his love and compassion. And he satisfies his desire with good things. He renews his strength like the eagles. David was talking about things that are intangible. And I thought, why would he do that? Why didn't he thank God for maybe his protection over his life or for his family or, or for the men under his care? or for his castles, or, or his riches, or, or things that are tangible. And I came to the realization that the things that David was thankful for are the things that can never be taken away. You see, you and me, our homes can be taken away. Our jobs, our security, our cars, our kids could be taken away, our spouse could be taken away. If the things that David was thankful for are the things that the Bible says, lay your treasure in heaven things that will not rot. And David understood that the things he was thankful for the most was that he was loved by God, that God cared about him enough to pull him from the pit. How many of you guys have been from the pit? I mean, how many times I've messed up in my life and, and I've been ashamed, I feel guilty. Yet the Bible says he saved us from the pit. How many men and women of the Bible were thrown into the pit, yet God reached down in his compassion and pulled him out? And David was saying, listen, I've been in that pit, and yet, God, you love me so much that you pulled me out. David goes on to say that he forgives us from all his sins. The Bible says, as far as the east is from the west, God remembers our sins no more, and he throws our sins. East and west never meet. And David understood that God's love and compassion was able to save him and forgive him from all his sins. No matter what you have done, no matter the things that you have done, maybe even today, God loves us enough to remove our sins from us. And no one can ever take that salvation and grace from us. He says, you have crowned me with compassion. That means, Lord, you love me. You put your love upon my heart, upon my head. I remember a few years ago, we took the seniors out to the Philippines. And, and I wanted this group. I mean, they had family. They had everything as far as materialistic things can, you know, worldly possessions. I remember, you know, they were giving their parents a hard time about just even the littlest things. And as we took the senior class down into the slum area of the Philippines to minister to these kids who had nothing, many of those kids were crying and they were saying, you know, I, I thank God that I have a place to stay. Many of these kids were living on the street, eating out of garbage cans. And yet, here was these seniors realizing how blessed there was in their life. But I remember one senior, after that whole experience came, he said, you know, there were poor people out there, but the one thing I saw is when they were introduced to Jesus Christ, there are no poor people in Christ. They are all made rich because of his great love. And that's what David was saying. It's not about his house, it's not about his job, it's about God's great love for me, that he has crowned and he has poured his love upon my life. David says he renews our life. He satisfies me. He renews my life like the eagles. The 30 year war was a series of European conflicts lasting between 1618 to 1648. It involved most Western European countries and it was fought mainly in Germany. It was one of the worst times in history as many people died from economic upheaval, from the war itself, from epidemics that, stri that was spread through military conflict. And just different things. There was a pastor by the name of Martin Rinkart. He buried 6,000 people in a single year from the plague. He buried 15 people a day, including his own wife and his own children. It was a dark and difficult time in his ministry. Yet in the midst of those things, he remembered and was thankful for renewing his heart, for God renewing his life. He was thankful for God saving his life. 
He was thankful for the salvation and the love God continued to pour upon him. Even though he lost his wife, family, he realized that one thing that could not be taken away from him was God's compassion and love for him. He wrote a great hymn, and it's entitled, Now Thank We All Our God. And as I end this sermon with you this morning, I want to read the words that this Pastor Martin Rinkhart had written in the difficult, most difficult time of his life where he could have gave up on God, he could have been ungrateful, yet he continued to thank God for all the things he had. And this is what it says, this song, this hymn. Now thank we all our God with hearts and hands and voices who wondrous things had done in whom this world rejoices, who from our mother's arms had led us on our way with countless gifts of love is still ours today. I hope to this morning, as you are thankful for all the things that God has bestowed on you, the one thing we continue to be thankful for is great, God's great love and compassion for us. Amen. Would you bow your heads with me as we go to the Lord in prayer? Father, we thank you today. I pray for my friends who are here, God, that you would give us an, a heart of gratefulness and thankfulness for all the things you have done that we would not forget all your benefits, that we would continue to have a heart of gratitude in even the little things in life, the sun that rises in the morning, the rain that waters our gardens, being able to breathe, Lord God, just even the littlest things, that we would always be thankful in every circumstance, for this is your will for ours today. In your name we pray, amen. The Lord bless you, and I'll see you next week.